You are listening to the Wandering Chronicles podcast. I'm Ashley. I'm not Ashley. I'm Jamie. Oh, okay. I was going to say, who the hell are you then? <laughs> How's it going, Ashley? I was about to ask you the same thing. I have an Izzy update. Okay. She went to the vet. She had some blood stolen from her. I don't know the results of that blood thief. Vampires. Dr. Acula, at it again. I didn't know he was a vet. I thought it was Dr. Katz. <laughs> it is Dr. Katz, but she also goes by Dr. Acula. I don't know. She's a nice lady. I shouldn't say that. But um... <laughs> You backpedaled so fast. <laughs> I did. So her blood pressure is normal, which is great. So it was high last time we went, but she has a normal blood pressure this time. And she didn't lose any weight, which is good. Good. And um, I'll know the results of the blood thievery by uh, Wednesday. Sounds like you have a reason to believe that it's going to be decent news. I hope so. And then um, I will have my revenge on Johnny soon. So he's going to be getting blood taken from him. Well. In, in June. And that's revenge for him showing me his butthole every time I woke up from sleeping this weekend. It's like he waited until he knew I was stirring and then just turned around and showed me his asshole. Every single time. Every time. Gordy is hiding his asshole from me currently. I heard a rumor from him that that you had to uh, take care of some of his business. He shit on my floor. I literally (laughs) got up from my desk to go to the restroom. And when I came back to my desk, where I work, in my home, he had shat on the floor directly where my feet go. So, I feel like that's a sign. He's he's sending a message. I know how he feels about my my work now. <laughs> no, I had to like I took the spray cleaner, multi for surface cleaner and wiped everything, but I was sitting there and I was like, I feel weird. So then I mopped my floor in the middle of the work day because I'm like, I can't. Uh. <laughs> I can't, I can't live with this. My feet touch this, and they touch my bed, and I can't deal with that. No, so. nor should you. Yesterday <laughs> was my two-year soberversary. That's awesome. So that was congratulations. Exciting. Thank you. All it takes is a global pandemic. Alcohol's not all it's cracked up to be. It's no, really not that worth it. I can't drink by myself, really. And I have spent so much time alone that I haven't really missed it. Now, when that changes, I might feel differently, but I don't think so at this point. I've, no, I like how I feel doing, not having been drinking. So You're doing a good thing. Yeah, That's I was never thing. like an alcoholic, but I definitely no. used alcohol to get through social situations <laughs> because I am anxious when it comes to people. Girl, I got drunk at the last open studio because I was so anxious being around that many people. Yeah, I I think it would be worse now, but I wasn't yeah. great at it before. Yeah, I think the next one, which is coming up soon, I will probably just stick with just taking a, an edible beforehand and just not drinking any alcohol. It's not a bad idea, if it's a small one. Yeah, just to... yeah I got a bag of the non-sleepy, the sativa ones, and... I'm going to just take some of that and take a half if I need to. I'll take another half later, but just take a half. Let it mellow me out. Skip the alcohol together. My new favorite thing is a medication that my doctor prescribed me called Adorax. Okay. It is basically extra strength Benadryl, but she prescribed it to me for anxiety, Mm. and it does help. I try not to take it very often, but it does help. Yeah, my doctor prescribed Klonopin to me for when I have panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had any in such a long time, so I haven't really needed it. But she's like, yeah, when you're having a panic attack, take it and you'll you'll feel calm. If you take it while you're not having a panic attack, you're probably just going to go to sleep. Yeah, this is another reason why I'm sober. If I drink, I have very vivid dreams all the time. Mm -hmm. Sober all the time, too. And also when I'm drunk. But when I'm drunk, I don't realize it's a dream. So, in my dream, when I'm normal, when I'm healthy, when I'm sober, I might dream that I have a full bladder and I have to go to the bathroom. But I know it's a dream, so I won't pee. (laughs) 
<laughs> but when I'm drunk, I don't know what to dream, and I'm like, oh, I just go. Just go. <laughs> gotta go, just gotta go. It. And that happens, like, not every time, but it's happened a lot. Enough where I'm like, yeah, yeah I don't need to be drinking. Yeah. It, I don't yeah. think I've ever wet the bed from, from drinking alcohol. I've fallen asleep on the bathroom floor because of it, but not <laughs> but not peed the bed. Or How are you? I don't think I asked you. I'm okay. My freezer broke, so I had to throw away all my food. But oh. they came and fixed it pretty quickly. I took yeah. all of my books. I'm a big reader. And when I moved in, I was so like ready to get all of my shit out of boxes and just be done moving and just like, live in my apartment because it was such a stressful process that I shoved all my books on shelves and they were all over the place. There was no organization. I couldn't find anything. And I've bought an entire bookshelf's worth of books since that move. Oh, yeah. So I moved a bunch of stuff, DVDs, to my storage unit. And yeah, nothing too yeah. exciting. But they're all in a good organizational... Like I can find what I'm looking for. All of the Atwoods are together. All of the Pullmans are together. That brings me joy. As they belong. As they belong. Yeah. It just it makes my life easier. I alphabetized all of the literature. That's intense, but I like it. That's I'm what I did it. today. I am a little bit excited about this story, so if you want to get into yeah, it, we are absolutely. in Lake Mary Jane, Florida. How'd you get here? <laughs> How did I get here? I'm thinking I rode a dinosaur. Oh, interesting. That's almost yep. That's almost fitting with the story we're going to talk about today. Uh, oh, I did not mean for that to happen, but hey, I rode a dinosaur. Yeah, I hiked. How'd you get there? Nice. Took me a few months, but my feet hurt. I bet. So we actually have two and a half stories for this. Ooh. They're all very connected, so it might not seem like they are separate, but they are. So just keep okay. that in mind. So Lake I'm Mary ready. Jane is an unincorporated area in Orange County, Florida, that is a part of the Orlando metro area, situated about 23 miles southeast of downtown Orlando. Okay. This community is named after the lake. It was developed next to Lake Mary Jane, which is used for recreational activities like tubing, kayaking, and jet skiing. Sounds like a party lake. <laughs> also located on the shores of Lake Mary Jane are the Isle of Pine Nature Preserve, Moss Park, and Split Oak Forest. Very nice. Split Oak Forest has been protected land since the 1990s and is considered to be the home of several vulnerable species, including the Florida scrub jay and the gopher tortoise. Gotta keep the scrub jay going. The Florida scrub jay is a gorgeous blue bird that is thought to be the only bird that is native to and only present within Florida. The gopher tortoise is a species of tortoise that is native to southeastern U.S. and it is seen as a keystone species because it digs burrows that can be up to 48 feet long and 9 feet deep. Oh, the gopher tortoise looks like it knows shit. Yeah, that's what you rode down there on. Basically, yeah. <laughs> See? See the connection? <laughs> this is why it took me so long. I rode a gopher tortoise. I think they got some moves. I mean. If they need to. <laughs> oh, the scrub jay is so pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely protect the gopher tortoise and the scrub jay. <laughs> it doesn't deal with no scrubs. <laughs> I don't want no scrubs. Scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Yeah. These burrows provide temporary or permanent shelter for as many as 400 other species of animals, whether the tortoises are present or not. Because of this, gopher tortoises are thought to have a disproportionately large effect on the natural habitat and have a critical role in maintaining the structure of an ecological community, which is why uh, they're I... considered a keystone species. Fair enough. I'm looking at this image, like the cartoon image of all the animals and how they interact that mm -hmm. you posted. And I gotta say, the burrowing owl's face is just precious. <laughs> so he's just like, what the fuck? How'd you get down there, homie? How'd you get down there? You want to come out? Come I'd on, like to eat you. <laughs> these, are, these drawings are just precious. I'm sorry. The burrows created by these tortoises protect them and other dwellers from predators, extreme temperatures, and wildfires. Gopher tortoises are also the state tortoise of Florida, which I feel like is oddly specific. Do all states yeah. have a state tortoise? And I just didn't know about that. I thought it was just like a state bird and a state flower. I did too. Apparently there's also state tortoises. I don't even know if every state has tortoises. Um, 
I can guess that they don't. I mean, I don't know. They have them. There are tortoises here. How many breeds of tortoise are there that every state has, like, their specific tortoise? Wouldn't well, there be some overlap? There always is overlap. Yeah. If you look at the state bird, there's a lot of overlap between states, All too. All right. I'm but, Googling this. What are you Googling? Goog- I'm Googling if every state has a state tortoise. I just thought that was so weird, like... It is weird. You know, I was <laughs> telling you this. They fixed my fridge. I guess my fridge yeah. must have been broken for quite a long time before I realized it was broken. Because now that it's working, oh. I can see how much noise it's making. <laughs> oh. Okay, so not every state has a state tortoise, but every state apparently has a state reptile. What is Alaska's? Uh, oh, I guess not every state has one. Sorry, I misspoke. 28 states have reptile representatives. Okay, that makes more sense. I was I, just trying to think what would live in Alaska. Apparently California has two. Tortoises? The desert... Yeah, it has a desert tortoise and then a leatherback sea turtle. I thought turtles were different than tortoises. Yeah. Oh, God. so, too. (laughs) Yeah, and Florida has a loggerhead sea turtle, American alligator, and the gopher tortoise as... They have three. Interesting. three state reptiles. I just thought that was weird. Illinois has a painted turtle. Missouri's. I did not know that. Three-toed box turtle. Yep. When I first moved here, I lived kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And any time I would leave my house from, like, mid-April to the end of May, or maybe even a little bit into June, I would have to stop at least three times to get anywhere to cross a tortoise across the road. Oh, yeah. Because I'm not going to hit it. And they move super slow. Apparently, Illinois and Vermont share a turtle. We, have, we both have a painted turtle. Mm, yeah. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. There it is. Split Oak Forest is what's known as a mitigation bank, defined by the Environmental Protection Agency as, quote, a wetland, stream, or other aquatic resource that has been restored, established, and enhanced or preserved for the purpose of providing compensation for unavoidable impacts of humans' modern way of life, unquote. Essentially, the concept is that humans recognize that our presence in some areas is inherently detrimental to the environment. So to offset the negative impact of humans developing these areas, some portion of the land or resources is set aside and cared for to preserve the flora and fauna of that region's natural environment. As they should be. Mm Mm-hmm. The formation of this mitigation bank was a joint effort between Orange County as well as neighboring Osceola County, managed by the Florida Wildlife Commission and paid for by Osceola County and the Florida Communities Trust, both of which are publicly funded, which is, in my opinion, an important detail. Yeah. But in July 2018, the Central Florida Expressway Authority proposed to extend the Osceola Parkway, a local expressway, by more than a mile and right through Split Oak Forest. Not cool, man. I know. The Osceola Parkway is a 17.5 mile long, partially tolled road that extends east to west, connecting Walt Disney World with Interstate 4 and the Florida Turnpike. Oh, Disney. Yep. (laughs) Always going back to Disney. Yep. In December 2019, Mayor Jerry Demings and four commissioners approved this toll road, despite lots of public outcry against it. Yeah, what about the turtles? And come on. Yeah, I don't know. The scrub jay's got to do its scrub thing somewhere. FYI, did you know that turtles and tortoises aren't the same thing? That's what I, I knew that, and I okay. still always Okay, I wasn't say sure because I didn't know that for a lot of my life, so... No, I... I knew that, and I still will be, like, interchangeable in yeah. my head, even though I know it's absolutely not the case. I understand, yeah. and I'm not judging. <laughs> I just was letting you know in case you cared. Yeah, I do care, and I still will make that mistake. I'll still be like, turtles and tortoises. Yeah. No, same thing in my head. Both shelled and small, short, uh, slow-moving, so. Yeah, for sure. I totally get it. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and say that Disney directly is involved in the idea of making this extension right through protected land, but I am going to say that it is pretty clear that Walt Disney World is given special consideration by government officials. Yeah. And I'm not not going to say that Disney wouldn't directly benefit from this extension either. 
Oh, they absolutely would. Mm -hmm. They absolutely would. I've never been to the Orlando area, but I spent a fair bit of time looking at street maps of this area, and the extension looks like it would be a considerably faster route to Disney for some travelers coming from the southeast. What's more important, getting to the theme park or, you know, preserving lands that provide home and food for protected animals? You know how humans are. I know are. where I stand on this. But I do too. Yeah. I think it's crazy. I think it's nuts. Absolutely bonkers. I briefly read this and I don't know, I did not like fact check this, so I don't know if this is legitimately true or not, but I read an article saying that Orlando is like significantly hotter than areas around it because of how much development and concrete there already is there. So to me, that's enough sign that like, it's time to fucking stop, right? Like, yeah, take it down a notch, because I would not be surprised if that were a true fact. Yeah, like I said, I didn't fact check it. I wasn't specifically looking at that information, but it just seems to me like at some point it's okay to say we've, we've done enough. Yeah, I think we've given people enough routes to Disney World. Yeah. Calm down. It's okay. I also always get Disney World and Disneyland mixed up, but I know Disneyland is a smaller one in California, and yet I still <laughs> will, like interchangeably call them Disneyland and Disney World. I don't know. Yeah, they're essentially the same thing to me. <laughs> Zero interest in it. Yeah, no. I was super curious if people who live near Disney just fucking hate it because of shit like this. So I did some Googling, and I'm not kidding. Every single fucking website I saw referencing this had nothing but glowing reviews. Really? Not a single negative thing to say, and I find that fucking creepy. Yeah, that's some Stepford shit. Yeah, there's no part of me that thinks that for a lot of locals, the tourists and Disney, and all of that that comes with it isn't fucking annoying. <laughs> like, that would be so annoying to me. Yeah, I'd find that incredibly irritating. Like, it's but... bad enough when you live in a town that has, like, a festival, and you're like, ugh. I used to live in Traverse City, Michigan, and they have the Cherry Festival, which is about a week, and tons of people come for Cherry Festival. And it's kind of fun. Like, there's stuff to do. But when you live there and you have to go to work... It's like, God, I have to drive past these fuckers and it's going to take me twice as long to get everywhere. I can't imagine that being the case all the time. I mean, it's kind of what it's like living in a major, like a large city like New York, Chicago, L.A. I, I'm assuming Orlando's like that, too. And like St. Louis, I'm sure, has festivals all the time, at least during the summer and fall. And there's always things going on. But like, I noticed that in Chicago year round and it annoys the shit out of me being like walking to the train and there's all these drunk idiots on the train from like some concert or festival they went to. And you're just like, God damn it. Just take an Uber home. Why do you have to be on the train? Yeah. Leave me alone. Or like Cubs fans. God, don't even get me started on them. They smell like take a shower. I don't care that you're wearing the same jacket you wore in every game. It's fucking June and you're wearing a leather jacket. Take it off. You smell like B.O. That's such oddly specific complaint. <laughs> it's like very, very specific. It comes from a personal story where I actually was stuffed into a red line train going to see, I think I was going to go have dinner with Dan and Eric or something. I'm assuming that's what it was. And I got on the train and it was like, the middle of June, there was a Cubs game. And so, like, the train is just packed until you get to Addison. And there's all these people there being like, yeah, I'm so excited about this game. I'm wearing the same jacket I wear to every game. And it's, like, this, like, leather, like, letterman jacket where, like, the sleeves are leather but the body's not. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I wear this, this jacket every game. It's good luck. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, he's standing there with his arm up because he's holding on to, like, the railing not to fall. And all I can smell is the B.O. just flowing from his armpit and I'm like several people away and I can still smell it and I'm wishing for death. I'm wishing for somebody to die. I don't care if it's me or him, but I'm wishing for it. Like and then Addison excuse gets, me, sir, the smell of your rotting corpse would be better than this. Yes. <laughs> yes. At least then, you know, everybody would have to experience it. And we'd all just get annoyed with it and throw him out the, the door. The smell just, of a corpse tends to linger. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't have to linger much past Addison, True. but still. <laughs> anyway, the Friends of Split Oak Forest is a group of locals who are, quote, protecting Split Oak Forest for the future, unquote. And even though they have been fighting like hell, so far things really haven't been going their way. On April 27, 2022, so literally a couple days before we recorded this, 
Wow. That After four hours really of public comments, many of which were in opposition of the expressway extension, the Florida Communities Trust Board unanimously approved a plan to extend Osceola Parkway through Split Oak Forest. <sighs> This is after, by the way, in 2020 when Orange County voters passed a referendum opposing the project. So just ignore the voters and do whatever gets you the biggest kickback. Mm -hmm. To me, that begs the question, who wants the extension and why does their opinion matter more than the voting majority of the region? What's a really big corporation that stands to gain from this? I can't think of any. Huh? Shady as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds super sketchy, and I can't think of a single company that would want such a terrible thing. <coughs> Disney! Oh, my, you really had a terrible cough there for a second. Are you okay? As you fuck the mouse! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Sneezes are jarring. Bless me. <laughs> Bless you. So what is next for the Split Oak Forest? Well, currently, the Friends of Split Oak Forest group is considering legal action, but as this group is run by local citizens, funding would be needed to accomplish this goal. Currently, the group is collecting donations on their website, friendsofsplitoakforest.org, which will be linked in our show notes. Absolutely. If you would like to donate, or even if you just want to learn more about the project, you can definitely go check that out. I will be going to that website as soon as I can. For sure. Honestly, the Orlando area is a bit of a hot mess right now because so many people are currently or have recently relocated to the area and the impact that this is having on the environment there is insanely negative. Orange County, Florida is one of the fastest growing counties in the country and this has led to talks of developing previously natural areas outside of Split Oak Forest as well. You don't need to expand that much. Like, leave the preserved areas alone. They're preserved for a reason. It's okay if people can't find a place to live. You don't all have to move there. Exactly. Yeah, you can just, like, commute a little bit. Yeah. That's fine. Or just go to Disney once a fucking year, like normal people. Yeah. Like, you don't have to live there. You don't have to go there all the time. The fireworks would drive me crazy. (laughs) Everything about it would drive me crazy. There's no way. Uh Uh-uh. No, no. Absolutely not. Lake Mary Jane herself is also under threat due to a development that is planned for a site just north of the lake which would convert 1,900 acres of wetlands, pine flatlands, and cypress forest into homes and office buildings. This site is a favorite spot for locals to watch wildlife like egrets, sandhill cranes, and wood storks, which I definitely Uh, spelled strokes, so that's good. Wood strokes. (laughs) I know. I'm not going to go. I'm not touching that topic. Nope. That was a mistake. (laughs) Yes, it often is. (laughs) God. In an unprecedented move, Lake Mary Jane has decided to protect herself by suing. Good. The lake, along with neighboring Lake Hart, the Crosby Island Marsh, and two adjacent streams had filed a case... Bless you. Have filed... (laughs) My cat sneezed. (laughs) Oh, okay. Have filed a case in Florida State Court in February of 2022. According to the filing, the development would, quote, adversely impact the lakes and marsh, causing damage that is concrete, distinct, and palpable, unquote. Though this lawsuit represents the first instance in which an inanimate feature of nature has tried to defend itself in an American courtroom, there is precedent for the case, with animals going to court to protect their rights on several occasions, including the Pylila. What is the Pylila? The pileela is a critically endangered finch-billed species of bird found only on the upper slopes of Mauna Kea, a dormant volcano on the island of Hawaii. Oh, very nice. And the species filed a lawsuit against the Hawaii Department of Land of Natural Resources in the 1980s. The lawsuit was successful and in 1981 established the right to protection of endangered animals from human conventions that damage the ecosystems which they inhabit. Absolutely. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Lake Mary Jane's lawsuit because if that goes well, it could mean a lot of positive things for other areas in the country as well once that legal precedent is set. Yeah, after uh, anything that's currently being threatened or in the future could be threatened would have 
a legal avenue to say, hey, it worked here. And it worked in Hawaii, so that would... In Hawaii, it was the species, though. So it is dissimilar, but different. And I, it'll be okay. interesting to see if there's a difference in how it's treated. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's not an entire ecosystem. It was just one species saying, hey, like, like please sue for our... Y- y'all have left all your fucking goats out here, and the fucking goats are killing us. Please... Yeah. Rain in your fucking goats. Keep your goats in a pen. That's what happened. There was a whole oh. feral goat problem. Fair. I got a feral Johnny problem. <laughs> Can relate. Yes. Hi, Johnny. Both of these situations are ongoing, so we will have to wait and see what the outcome for them will be. But I really hope that both initiatives are successful because we won't really have a lot of chances to stop this kind of damage before it starts. And yeah. once it's started, it's often too little too late to reverse the damage that has been done. I mean, Look at the damage yeah. that humans did to Yosemite before it became a protected national park land. They totally I mean, fucked look- it up. I'm looking at this map that you have on here of, like, the proposed alternate routes for this highway, and they don't seem like... The one that completely avoids Split Oak Park doesn't seem like such a bad option. Exactly. It's a little out of the it, way, but it's still a little. faster route. Yeah. Like, why do you it. have to go through it? It almost seems like they're angry that he, like he, people are arguing with them. And they're yeah. going to do exactly what the people don't want them to do. Just to be bitches about it. I mean, even the minimal route through, that one that just goes right towards the edge of it, is not nearly as bad as going straight through the fucking park. Right. I still would prefer and the obvious avoidance. Road. If you have to spend a little money to avoid going through the park, the whole idea of a toll road is that you can recoup some of those costs and also pay to upkeep the actual road. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. No, no, this map, like, they could easily avoid going straight through the park and still make a shortcut to Disney. Yeah. It's so fucking dumb. It's so dumb. It is, it really is. And Disney should want to protect the land that they're near, because that is another thing that is positive about the area. Yeah. Being able to go to Disney and then spend a couple days doing the natural thing to go see wood storks or whatever the fuck. Yeah, go to Lake Mary Jane and hang out and see some wildlife. That is something that my... Bless you, Gordy. (laughs) That was a loud sneeze. I heard it. I know. But yeah, that is something that as a child, my family would have done. Yeah. So I found that I more interesting than Disney. I don't want to see people dressed as a giant mouse. That's terrifying. I just want to wrap this whole thing up with one more thing because I would be remiss without including a Florida man story. Yes! While we were actually in Florida. Yes. So I have a short little snippet of a Florida man story that's related to the whole thing that I'm going to throw in there. Yes. The headline reads, quote, Florida man arrested for dumping red paint into gopher tortoise burrow, unquote. Whoa. Oh, is that what the red tortoise was? Yes. Oh my god, I was wondering what Raphael the red tortoise was. Yes. Oh shit, he got a full makeover. Because of course that happened in Florida. Oh, that poor tortoise. He looks like he's about to go on a war path or something, like he's about to go to war. <laughs> He's like, he's putting on his paint to intimidate the other tortoises, and he's off to war. He's about to step up and do his Braveheart speech. Yes! Give him freedom or give him death. That's a tortoise Mm. I'd follow. The crime was discovered when Raphael the tortoise, covered head to toe in red paint, was found crossing a road. The man was charged with littering hazardous waste and unlawful possession of a gopher tortoise, which is protected due to its vulnerable species status. The tortoise, which was named Raphael, was taken to a local wildlife rehabilitation center called Swamp Girl Adventures, where he was cleaned using a toothbrush and a lot of time and dedication. Oh, thank God. I feel like this goes without saying, but don't paint fucking tortoises. (laughs) I feel like it should go without saying, but just in case, yes. Not only does it make them more vulnerable to predators because they stick out like a sore fucking thumb. Yeah. But it also inhibits the animal from actually absorbing the necessary vitamins that they need because they absorb them through their shells, especially the sunlight. Plus, the paint can literally poison their bloodstream. Oh, this guy is so lucky this tortoise was able to be saved. Yes. I have a story about this 
Remember when I said that I used to cross turtles all the time on the road? Yeah. yeah. One day, I found a turtle on the road. It was pink. Covered in pink nail polish. Oh, god damn, no. So I took him home. Her. I, I don't know. It was a girl, because you can tell by the way that the shape of their bottom shell is. Yeah. Took her home. It was 4th of July. All of my friends were at a Grateful Dead concert. Yeah. So I named her Tara. And I spent the entire day scrubbing her with a toothbrush until I got all of the nail polish off of her. And then I brought her back to where she was. Do you think she was like a pet that escaped or a pet it that was, was like She go? wasn't a pet. She was a wild tortoise. How did somebody get pink nail polish on her? Or it just somebody felt? tried to keep her as a pet. I'm uh, guessing a little kid painted the tortoise that they uh, tried to keep as a pet. And then I don't know if they were letting it play in the yard or they just didn't want to care for it anymore and it got away. But it also had all kinds of dog bites on it because oh, I don't know if it was this. It was healed. Like you could yeah. tell that it had been injured, but it wasn't currently injured, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I called a wildlife rescue place and said, okay, what do I do in this situation? Because I don't know how to get nail polish off something without nail yeah. polish remover. And there's no way that's good for it. Oh, absolutely not. So they helped me out, and they're like, yeah, people do this all the time. They don't think that it's a problem. They don't realize that that's very, very bad for the tortoises. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Thankfully. thankfully, Tara was okay. I'm so glad you were able to help her. She stayed with me for a day. <laughs> we listened to Grateful Dead, and then I was already sad. It was 4th of July, so I was, like, sad that I wasn't with my friends because they all went to this concert that I didn't have the money for. It was the 50th anniversary Grateful oh. Dead reunion. When they supposedly were the, the final show, they've continued playing, so that was not actually their final show. But I was very sad because I wanted to go because the lead singer from Fish was playing with them at that show, and I was like, oh. ah. That would been Yeah, so that was my experience with a turtle that was painted. Don't oh, fucking do that, people. It's not good for them. No, no, absolutely not. I am glad you were able to help Tara and give her a chance at a normal life without a pink shell. I couldn't not tell a Florida man story. How can you go to Florida and not tell a no. Florida man story? Absolutely not. I, I would have been very confused if you had gone to Florida without telling a Florida man story. It's when cool. I went to Florida for Thanksgiving with my brother oh, that's right. and my I niece. Forgot. Yeah. I spent half the car ride driving from Fort Lauderdale to my parents' new place. Spent half the time just reading Florida man headlines and my nieces were cracking up over it. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, Ashley's parents moved to Florida. Florida. Recently. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy for them. If they're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't blame them. I don't blame people for wanting to get away from winter. No. There's so Not much to get away from. Yeah. I wouldn't want yeah. to live in the same state as alligators. I hear they're pests. I think it's hilarious. Have you ever seen any of the news stories of when there is, like, the rare freeze in Florida or North Carolina, I think South Carolina also has alligators. Yeah. They poke their nose above the water when it starts to get cold. And the water will freeze with their little noses poked up so they can keep breathing. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's adorable. Kind of brilliant. It's kind of brilliant. Kind you'll, of brilliant. Have to, you'll have to look up a picture of it because it's pretty damn cute. <laughs> I absolutely will. Yeah, so that is my story up? about Florida. Yay! I loved it. That was... That was informative, and I'm going to look up their website. I'm going to try and donate some money to that. Me too. Yeah, I and I think it's it's cool that, I mean, we are recording this a little bit in advance, but this just all happened very recently, so yeah. we will have to do some kind of update when there is more information. Absolutely. Hopefully, they're able to thwart these two developments. I just feel like at some point... It almost does seem like vengeance at this point. Like They're being told no, and they're just like, fuck you, I want to do it anyways. The amount of money that Disney is able to fortify local politicians with, I, yeah. I mean, I can't prove that's speculation. Obviously, I have no idea if that's really happening, but it seems, it doesn't seem like a conspiracy theory. It seems very possible. If it walks like a mouse and squeaks like a mouse, it's probably a mouse. Yeah, exactly. A greedy Same. fucking mouse. So do you want to see where we're going to go next time? Yeah. Spin the wheel. All right. Let's see. Spin that wheel. Okay. This is fun. We're going to go to Houston, baby.
Ooh, from one big state to another. Like I know. Florida, we Texas. were just talking about how, and we didn't plan this, but it is funny yeah. that we picked two of the big states that were like, how are we, we still haven't been to California. I guess that's the one that's holding out. Oh, California, the one that got away. <laughs> For so now. Far. We'll catch her. Yeah. Gotta we'll catch them all. Let's find out what we'll talk about. Ooh, all right, one popped out. That's gotta be it. Uh, it is a love story. Ooh, interesting. Ooh. Okay. Have we had a love story? Oh, we did with Winnicon. Yeah, Winnicon, but that was mostly because... Yeah, so that'll be fun. Love story. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, it's not, hopefully it will not be a story that just I love, an actual story about love. It'd be we'll nice to find something find. that's not us just, um... Bringing everyone down with sad missing people and... No, that's not just us finding a way to manipulate the topic to fit what we want to talk about. <laughs> Houston's pretty big. I bet we can find He's, something. I think I can find something. We'll see what I find, but... Cool. We'll, uh, we'll see you there next week. Yeah. All right. Well, happy wandering. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Wandering Chronicles podcast with your hosts, Ashley and Jamie. You can follow us on social media at Wandering Chronicles Pod on TikTok, Wandering Chronicles Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and WND Chronicle Pod on Twitter. Or you can email us at Wandering Chronicles Podcast at gmail.com. New episodes drop once a week. If you're liking what you're listening to, please consider leaving us a five star review on Apple. If you don't like what you're listening to, that's fine. Please tell everyone you know about our podcast. Your bank teller, that person at work that you're pretty sure steals your lunch out of the fridge every day, but you can't prove it, so you don't say anything. The hot dad that walks his dog by your house every day? Your cashier at the grocery store? Your children's friends' parents? I bet they listen to podcasts. Hey, thanks. Bye! Some of my least favorite moments are when I'm awake. I don't want to be awake for five days straight. I want that on a t-shirt. Some of my least favorite moments are when I'm awake.